Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. It's Nico here, and we're going to talk about another topic today, a little tutorial, if you will. Um, I've been finding these one-off tips and tricks things uh, doing, feeling pretty well. Uh, I want to incorporate it into my pipeline, but for now, uh, let's just jump right into the tip, right? Today I want to talk to you about an interesting thing you can do with Clip Studio Paint that I haven't done for the longest time and it's helped me back, but since starting on like comic, graphic novel and all that, uh, you know, I've been resorting to more efficient, easier ways of working. Um, and that technique is what I like to call theme building. So, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get right into it. So scene building is essentially as you can see, if I pull up my little thing here, it's just taking whatever 3D assets you might have, throwing them into the scene and literally building the scene out of it, right? Uh, I've resisted this method for the longest time, maybe just simply out of habit, uh, but also like, I do feel like it's easy to get caught up in like a static sort of method of building scenery and uh you know also losing some personality some of that line action some of the happy things you do um so yeah uh, and in that regard i would recommend that you at least thumbnail sketch uh some things before you start building a scene uh just because you get like a raw idea just raw emotion and energy from i don't know just the sketches you do uh, and, and I find it easier for me personally to like think about scenes like that because I mean ultimately if you're going to be making a painting it would be better to think about it like a painting rather than uh, a, a 3D like model like put together and stuff like that. Um, and I suppose if you just went straight into like I, I have built scenes like just going straight into the assets and like slapping them on there right. I suppose if you did that it would be more of thinking about it like a director or a filmmaker just like kind of like scoping out the scenes and stuff like that and seeing how it can work. But uh, since I'm an artist I personally prefer to do sketches first. Uh, I feel like it it helps you intentionally set your idea down so that the scene building is to support your idea rather than you getting in the habit of just like building a scene just haphazardly out of like whatever you have and just kind of trying to draw around that, um, you know, let you guide the scene, not the scene guide you. But yeah, so that's that's my spiel on that. Uh, so we have this, this sketch here. I did it like a really long time ago. I was just looking for a sketch to practice this concept with because I mean, we can go over here to this file where I already built like a couple of scenes, right? And these didn't have pre-sketches, but it's just, you know, I had assets, I put them together. I was like, I'm wondering if I could like put a character in like a space and make it work. And they do kind of work. Like when you look at these scenes themselves, it has like sort of a composition already. Like even though these characters aren't defined, uh, you can just tell by looking at them and where they are there's like a bit of a story going on here and that in and of itself is like interesting right um i personally don't want to overdo this because then this i feel like this will also build a habit of like drawing over or painting over literally everything you do um so it's purely for like a pipeline efficiency method uh, I, I don't think it'll ever replace like learning foundations or stuff like that because like if, if you're struggling with like anatomy or foundations I do think you just still need to spend time uh, learning them. Uh, drawing over the models is never going to compensate for that. It will it'll just have like this amateurish feel. In fact I would argue like the further you can get from the models even though you built a scene with them the better because it, it just it carries like a veteran weight to it right uh you know when whenever you're like sketch like drawing something with like expertise it it, it kind of shows it's like it's got your own kind of mark on it um but yeah these are like this is like a rough example of like what we're gonna get into so anyway enough rambling let's go ahead and try to build a scene so we have like this caped uh, crusader for lack of a better term right um, and there's some mountains in the distance and it's got a plane and a background and all 
like structures to the side we'll we'll figure it out uh i will say this one might be a little difficult because namely because i don't think i personally have like a lot of assets that deal with like the ground and i don't find dealing with the ground to be easy in blender in any capacity not blender clip studio paint it would be easier to do this in blender uh this particular scene um so i think what i'm going to do in this case because i feel like searching for a ground would take forever i don't, I don't even think i have one and the point is to save time not like eat up a bunch of time doing it so i'm gonna select a brush here and wow that is a brush that takes up quite a bit of a uh, ram let's let's switch to this like a g-pen g-pen should be fine but anyway yeah i just need like flat things anyway so we're just gonna g-pen in the ground here um and i'm gonna make another layer lighten it a bit we're gonna like g-pen in this ground here Yeah, and I'm already like covering it up, right? Don't worry, it'll, we'll 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 get it right. It it'll come together. We're gonna go to the back, and I already made a layer, so we're gonna G pin in this ground here. All right, well, that's our ground. We're gonna select all these layers, drop the opacity a bit. We still want to see the rest of it. Um, and I do want this to kind of be over them all so maybe doing that will also help is this multiply or is this normal i think i should make this multiply so yeah we'll, we'll make it like multiply and i can drop the opacities of these like just a little bit i want to know where they are anyway that's our ground plane. Um, I feel like it's easier to work with it that way. Anyway, 3D steps here. I do think we are going to... Ooh, it's perfect I separated these in the layers. Because now we can just intertwine the 3D between like the ground layers as well. So like how this middle ground layer is going to be behind some of these structures. But this forward ground layer will probably not be in front of it. Um, yeah, we'll be able to throw in some structures there. I'm wondering if I want to go with one of these 3D buildings. I do have other things. Let me, I do have a tower in here, right? So let me go and find some of my 3D objects that, I, that I've downloaded. And I get a ton of them. I'm always like downloading stuff off the asset store because some of them are free temporarily and you never know when you're going to use them. Like it always comes up like five months later. I'm like, oh wait, I could really use that one asset I downloaded. So uh, yeah, I, I totally overdo it. They're perfect. Uh, something that feels like ruin-like. I won't want this to be like ruins. So we're gonna take this, my goodness. And whenever you're working in 3D, you're gonna have to use control uh, plus control minus to zoom in and zoom out. Because if you scroll, it will shift, it will activate manga perspective. And you don't always want manga perspective. Sometimes manga perspective does like really, really weird things. Um, I'm not always into it. So what I tend to do is I start off controlling the camera of the first object. And I sort of like set it into place. Uh, is it this way or is it okay? Yeah, it's like that and I sort of set the object kind of into place and I, and I wish this didn't snap. I wish it could be more subtle Because it snaps. I'm sure there's a setting for that But I feel like it's overdoing it a bit. So I'll just I'll just leave it like this. It's so big. It doesn't matter anyway back to the point uh, because it's the first object I like to clarify that this is the camera angle this is where the scene's gonna build itself off of and if you just go in and throw in another object on the same scene it's gonna 
populate the same scene, right? But you can see it's here, uh, you know, clearly in the way, right? Uh, wow. All right. Hold on. Let me lock this layer so I don't accidentally select things again. Let me, let me lock this layer too. Now I'm going to lock all the layers I'm not editing so they can stay out of my way. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the camera over here. We're going to duplicate it. So camera one is our default base camera for the scene. Camera two, we're going to shift. All right. So I switched to camera two because if you select the camera angle here, you try and rearrange the second object. Oh, oh my, it's moving our tower too. We don't want to move the tower because the tower is exactly where it needs to be. So we're going to undo. And we're going to, you're going to use the things with the, the cube. No, don't use the things with the camera, the things with the cube. This will move this specific object in a particular direction. So, and this, this uh, little, I don't know what you would call it, module, this, this is really helpful too. If you use a 3D program, it should be very familiar. So we're gonna move it on this axis here. We're gonna rotate it. And we're gonna move it back here. And you know, it, it's looking a little weird, but since we're on a second camera, not our main camera, we're just gonna start shifting the camera angle so we can kind of get an idea of like, how we want the object to be kind of like laid out. Do we want it flat on? Do we want it like at an angle? So I'm going to try to put it at a bit more of an angle there. Uh, let's go back to camera one. Is this right? This tool moves it along like the ground axis. And sometimes when you move it by default, it puts it in a weird a weird spot automatically and then you have to readjust it it can be tricky to work with but if you have a little patience and don't panic you can put it put it in an interesting position nice nice i do think i want to nudge it a bit so whenever you want to nudge an object i don't recommend using this tool it always resets it to like wherever your mouse is and that's that's not good for nudging. All right, hold on. Camera two, camera one, give me the damn object. Okay. And it doesn't want to select it for some reason. All right, hold on, if I select this, okay, I select this. Okay, I know what's going on. It's all the way out there. That's what's going on. All right, gotta keep an eye out for that and watch the scrolling. <laughs> you don't want the manga perspective, at least all the time. Let's see, we're gonna shift it that way a bit. And that, I'm trying to align it with the sketch. That seems to be aligned pretty well. Um, let me put away the sketch. This is decent. I wonder if it's on ground level. Let me try, place the model on the ground level. Awesome. So that should probably be the first thing you do. <laughs> That's my mess up. Place it on ground level so you can keep an eye on it. I do want to scale this up. So let's try to make it taller. And maybe we can add a little, a little more width to this too. Um, yeah, I don't want it to feel like we get like the top of the structure. I, I want it to just feel kind of like in place. Um, hold on. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm looking. OK, that's ground level. But I want it to be a little further, so we're going to go down, switch to the camera. It should be a little further from the other one. It's a little further in the back. So even though it it aligned with the sketch, I feel like in actual perspective, it wasn't right. 
it was it was looking weird so over there over there um and i do think it'll have to be elevated to an extent so if we like turn our layer invisible and we get rid of like all the ground fluff the structure is kind of like sitting on this ground level right so maybe an easy thing to do would be to just move it up to the ground level and that'll automatically like so if i go undo 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 so if i keep it like this and i'm i just decide whoops i'm gonna shift it up and move it to the ground level um it'll it'll create the illusion that I'm looking for. And I don't have to play with the actual, since it's not a flat plane, I don't have to play with the actual placement of it. Um, I do want to rotate it a bit since it's like, you know, supposed to create the illusion of like a particular thing. Let me go back to it. I may rotate it back slightly more. And sometimes you got to click off the 3D object to see it properly, see it like, in space, I do think I want to shift it down a hair, have the bottom kind of be eaten by the ground, and yeah, I, I, I think that's good. So let's see, I do think I want another structure right next to this one. Let's see, do I want to switch it up with a different building? I'm gonna switch up with a different building. I've got a lot of stuff here. I do think some of these structures are probably going to be too big. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'll go back to my 3D background objects and just pick one of these, like this one. And I throw it in there, right? And you know, I could I could add some wear and tear to it. So if I add some wear and tear to this thing. It'll just fit in the scene and uh, it'll still feel like ruins. We pull this back. I, I do want to rotate that back a bit. Don't, don't want it to look too, you know. Don't want it to look too uh, out of perspective. And I, I'm kind of willing to just take it back a bit further so it aligns with that. And I know it doesn't perfectly align with the skyscape here, but I think it works out fine. I like it. We could chop off like a piece of that building when we sketch things out. Um, so there's that. So we introduce the ground planes again. I know I have some mountains my download so we're going to go back into the downloads go to 3d background not 3d background 3d object uh i don't know why like people tag it differently but people do that sometimes so um and just as like quick side note this is an excellent way to navigate your downloads when you have a million downloads just search by the tag this has saved me tons of time I can't remember where everything is, so this is the only way to really find anything. Ah, snowy mountains, here we go. Wonderful thing about this mountain pack is these these are all different mountains. Uh, we can go back and they will luckily be on a different 3D layer because they have to go behind the ground level and all that. We're gonna go back here, we're gonna rotate the camera, so so we're going to shift the camera so it's appropriate and we're going to zoom in so it's the right size we're going to put it around here and it kind of fits it kind of fits i'm hoping it's not and there's a lot of things you can do with these mountains too right if you added multiples of them you can like piece them together so they make one mountain or you could just like you know separate them out make different mountain ranges it's a very versatile like 
3D tool. Do I still have the same camera? No, I don't have the same camera. So I'm gonna duplicate this. And we're gonna use camera two. Kind of reposition things a bit. We're gonna take this one, move it back here, move it over here. Camera one, it's pretty close, right? Camera two. I'm gonna shift it over a bit more. Rotate this a bit to the side. Give it a little personality. Lopsided mountain. Why not? I feel like this is supposed to have a peak. Hold on, let me get rid of the sight on the rest of these layers. This is supposed to have a peak, but I don't see a peak. Maybe if I rotate it. For one. There we go. So you're rotating it uh, up to get a bit of a peak, right? here I'm gonna click off kind of check it against the the thing the scene not looking bad not looking bad the, the mountains are in place so the background of the scene seems to be working pretty well and every everything looks like it's in place the scenes like pretty well built um, and you know when we convert to lines uh, these 3d models are going to add in like a, you know a good bit of like texture details to the actual buildings and stuff like that and we could just paint over them and alter them the way we want to so this is a great base to start off at and like it's almost the equivalent of building a scene in blender and then like trying to play with the lighting and like importing it and stuff like that which is great very useful very quick and that might actually be something i want to play with hold on you can find the lighting sections over here, 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 right here. And you just click and drag. So you can adjust the lighting how this wants to, see how the shadows play. Um, so you can put that in the dark. I'd rather actually put that in the light and kind of put this thing in the dark a bit. So I think that's a little more interesting. That's kind of the lighting I'm looking for. And I think the only next thing to do is to place a character. So this might be the interesting part because let's see if I can find a pose that fits with this. Right, right. We're just going to assume, I mean, you could easily paint in the character you want to, right? But we're just going to assume, uh, you know, you kind of want to like map the character in there as well. So you can just search through your poses, see what you got. Um, these are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of poses. You know what, here, I think I'll take the walking one. It's supposed to be with a gun, but you can probably replace that with anything. Now, here's where things get tricky. Let's go down and find camera two, because I gotta find out where this character is. Holy cow, where did they go? Is that them? They are tiny. They are tiny, tiny. Them, right? Oh my gosh, that is them. Okay, that's gonna be interesting. So we're gonna have to take the character here. We can either do two things. We can either size up the character or we can bring them really, really close to the camera. 
So I'm going to see how well we can match them with the camera. Otherwise, we might have to size them up. All right, here's camera one. Um, let's, okay. So we can bring them relatively close. Yeah, sizing them might not be necessary. That's good, that's good. Right, and we can go and adjust their size. Kind of rotate them, they're gonna be facing this way. Bring them back closer, bring them up here, bring them down. And we're gonna zoom out with the canvas, not the 3D thing, zoom back in, rotate. So I think like actually they will have to be a touch closer, like right here. I think when you look at it, like their feet are supposed to be on the ground. I'm not sure how, if I'm going to actually get that. Maybe the proportions are like totally different, but I think like, as long as you like map out the head it should be relatively okay. I think this works for me. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, and I think the next thing, another, another little trick you can do another, another great addition uh, to Clip Studio Paint that just makes things dynamic. We can go to a body type and we can select a completely different body type. We can select a body type male. We can just drag and drop on the character. You have to make sure to drop it on the character or it will just spawn a new one. We have a muscular male or if we want, we can even make a muscle female. I downloaded both of these off the asset store. So, whoops, undo, made a new one. Look at that, what I tell you? I'm gonna undo that again. Anyway, here it does it. Oh no, 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 no. So I think I may, for the muscle female, it's made weird. I may have to reverse it. So, which I might do, right? Um, so essentially you have to reverse it and do the muscle female, then put the pose on top of her. But with all the other ones, it should be as easy as like putting, doing the pose, putting a body type on the pose and it should transition. Um, muscle female is just like weirdly designed though, right? Hold on, let me, let me try to do this since it starts her off like right here and she doesn't have an outline. I don't know why she doesn't have an outline. They, they did a lot of weird things with this particular character. Um, I think the light source is also weird. I think if you, nope, 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 under, keep that intensity. Uh, I'm trying to remember, apply light source. There we go. There we go. Yeah, she doesn't have the light source applied on her either. It's, it's really strange. But uh, let's try to go back to downloads and find the same pose. Hopefully they don't reset it. They reset it. And we'll just scroll through. Da, 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 da. Here it is. Grab this pose, slap it on her, boom. And now we have a very, very muscular female doing the same exact pose. So she might be just, just flat out taller than him too. Anyway, so yeah, we click on the thing and let's like take it away. So now when you look at it, uh, they're, they're ahead of that too. Can't shift the opacity. So let's, uh, they should be, they should be on their own layer because they should be on top of that, shouldn't they? Okay, so we're gonna keep the opacity of this low. The opacity of these two can go up. So now when we look at it, the scene is practically built, right? There it is, there's the scene. We have the three planes of ground, we have the mountains in the back, 
the the sky is easy enough to handle I and mean, we have buildings here and the character placement and all that and it matches up pretty well with our initial batch and let, let me just for kicks and giggles get rid of it yeah the sketch has a different pose and all that um and you know it, it's not hard to put your own character in your own pose or whatever pose you want to uh that's not really a requirement uh, i suppose if you want to secure the anatomy you could play a little bit of extra time to do that but yeah it takes the thumbnail sketch and gets it like halfway there you have a lot of like rough direction and details kind of worked out and it's a really easy base to like work off of and um you know you just go here convert to lines and tones and you have like the tones and the lighting and the texture details on the models in there and everything and you can just pick it up from there paint over it 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 speeds up the process a lot because honestly rendering buildings like this would have taken a minute right um some people are fast enough to do it in 30 minutes which this took us like 30 minutes with some explaining and um describing but uh for most people this would have taken like a, a bit more time right I, I think the ground would have reached a more finished state but even still like especially like mountains and stuff it overall it would have taken a little more time and you are gonna have to do some fixing and cleanup considering where things are at but um no i i, I think it just sped up a good portion of the process right because I think the overall rendering you're going to have to do has been very much minimalized. And depending on what brushes you have, what textures they are, you could still fly through the rest of this painting as well. Anyway, that's it. I just run it to run through scene building and how useful it can be. And maybe I will show, <laughs> you know, some other time just scene building from scratch because this this was scene built from scratch. This was scene built from scratch. And like, you know, I, I approached it kind of like, oh, what if this was like a board or a key art? Or like, how do I tell a story here? Um, you can do these too. And then you have probably like less problems. It's a little more cohesive. This is even faster. Um, but yeah, that's all I wanted to, you know, show you guys. And I hope it helps you out in your future illustrations, comics, animations um definitely have some videos in mind for that but um yeah whatever you decide to do in the future thank you for stopping by and watching don't forget to like and subscribe or uh don't if this was the only time you need it whatever it's cool for you. anyway that's all see you next time Ooh, 